Hola a todos, Interact aquí de nuevo con otro episodio de Entity Education. Perdón a todos los hispanohablantes por mi pronunciación. Now for the intro again, but in English this time. Hello everyone, Interact back here again with another episode of Entity Education. Thank you, Ots, for the proofreading on my Spanish. In this episode, we're going to be covering Carmina Mora, probably better known as the artist. As always, timestamps are down below in the description and the pinned comment. The artist has the same base stats as most killers, despite being ranged, sort of, a movement speed of 4.6 meters per second, or 115%, and a terror radius of 32 meters. Now let's move on to talking about her power, Birds of a Feather. Now it's actually called Birds of Torment, but I think mine is a little catchier, because it's an actual phrase. Before we continue, I just want to give a shout out to my patrons over on Patreon.com and all of my Twitch subscribers. If you enjoy this series and can afford to, please consider donating to help me in continuing this series. If you can't afford to, that's fine as well. Just like and subscribe to appease the algorithm. I also want to say that I will never put an ad read or advertising anywhere in the actual video for the Entity Education series. I just don't feel right about it. There may be ads on other content that I post, but this series, the Entity Education series, will never have in-video advertising in it. Anyways, back to talking about the artist. Birds of Torment can be charged up by holding down Mouse 2, PC of course. You have three crows that you can summon by default, and you just have to press Mouse 1 on PC, of course, to summon them while you're holding down the charge. While you're holding your hand up to summon them, you'll see an 8 meter long and 1 meter wide line in the air that will show you the path that they will take once you release them. While they are on that 8 meter line, they will deal damage to any survivor that they touch, and after they reach the end of the visual indicator, they will continue flying across the map until they reach the actual boundaries of the map. It will take you one second for the artist to pull up her hand to place down Dire Crows, and you will be slowed to 3.68 meters per second, or 92% speed, while pulling up your hand. There is a brief cooldown of 0.5 seconds after placing a Dire Crow, where you will once again be slowed to 3.68 meters per second or 92% speed before you'll be able to place another one if you want to. For reference, 92% speed is basically like the most basic slowdown they use for killer's powers. Dire Crows will be spawned 2.5 meters in front of you, facing the direction indicated when you place them. As with most of the placement killer powers, there are some restrictions on where you can actually summon these dire crows to prevent abuse and other such nonsense. You cannot summon a dire crow within 1 meter of another dire crow, 10 meters of a hooked survivor, 2 meters of an exit gate, or 1 meter from the hatch. After placing any amount of dire crows, a few things will happen. Obviously the first will be that they'll be spawned in the actual environment where you and any survivors will be able to visually see them floating there menacingly. Dire Crows will stay idle in their place location for 10 seconds before disintegrating, and this amount is reset any time you place another Dire Crow, so theoretically you could keep a Dire Crow spawned for roughly 30 seconds if you wanted to for some odd reason. After any amount of Dire Crows have expired from being idle for too long, there is a brief 2 second cooldown while your ammo reserves of Crows refill. If a survivor touches an idle dire crow head in the air, they will become swarmed by crows, making a bunch of noise, obviously because they're being pecked, and giving the survivor the option to hold mouse one, PC, to shoo the crows away from trying to steal their sandwich. Beginning the repel animation will reveal the aura of the crow swarm to the killer for the first 2.5 seconds of the shooing, and repelling takes the survivor a total of 8 seconds before they're able to eat their lunch in peace. Survivors cannot vault windows or drop pallets while they are holding down the repel action, although they can just stop repelling at any time if they feel like, and this will reset the timer back to not being filled at all. If a swarm survivor is hit by another dire crow that is launched, they will take a single point of damage. If a survivor who is swarmed walks into an idle dire crow head, it will simply reset their shoe meter back to 8 seconds. If you press control while having any dire crow summoned at all, 
all dire crows will shoot forward from their position at a starting speed of 20 meters per second or 500 percent speed before speeding up to 35 meters per second or 875 percent speed after 0.3 seconds and they will maintain this speed after leaving their 8 meter launch pad until they hit the edge of the map and despawn. Firing any amount of crows will give you a 1.5 second cooldown, where once again you will be slowed down to 3.68 meters per second or 92% speed, and be unable to do any of the normal cooldown actions and basically just be allowed to move around. As a note, survivors can globally see the auras of crow swarms while they are flying in the air. Not that I really think most survivors are able to react to something that's moving so freaking fast. Any survivor that is on the actual 8 meter launch pad will take damage from the crow once it is sent out, and once the crows have actually taken flight off of the launch pad, or if they have gone through any object with collision, the survivor hit will instead just become swarmed instead of taking damage. If you manage to hit a swarmed survivor with another dire crow launch, they will take damage even if they were, say, across the entirety of Red Forest. The amount of time that it will take for the artist to regain all of her Bird of Torment charges depends on how many crows are actually shot out at any given time. It takes 5 seconds if only a single crow is launched, 9 seconds if you shoot exactly 2 crows, 12 seconds if you shoot 3, and 14 seconds if you shoot 4. Oddly enough, despite not actually being able to physically have 5 crows at a time, there is a cooldown of 15 seconds for doing it. Probably just old code that never got pruned from a previous iteration. So now because Behavior decided to make it weird, we have to get a little weird and talk about the hitboxes of Dire Crows. While they are idle and waiting around to take flight, or while they are actually on their launch pad in flight, they have a cube hitbox of 2 by 2 by 2.5 meters. While they're in flight or off of the launch pad, they have a cube hitbox of 2.5 by 2.5 by 2.5 meters, and a killer instinct detection hitbox of 4 by 4 by 4 meters. So any survivor within the 2 meter cube will be hit by crows, but any survivor outside of that, but also in the 4 meter cube hitbox, will instead just give off a killer instinct notification for 3 seconds. There is a grace period to make sure that if a survivor touches the Killer Instinct hitbox while it's flying directly at them, they don't just give off a weird split-second Killer Instinct notification and give you free tracking. Uh, they instead just get swarmed by crows, which, given Behavior's track record, is actually kind of nice to see that they considered this. Also, if you hit a survivor within 4 seconds of them giving off a Killer Instinct notification, the Killer Instinct just gets cancelled so you don't somehow get extra tracking on a survivor after you somehow swarm them and then hit them. Two additional things that I'm not really sure where else to put because they're kind of weird, but survivors within 12 meters of a flying crow are coded to hear an audio cue, and survivors have a 0.75 second period of invincibility from crows. This means you can't just stack two crows like right on top of each other and send them off to damage someone on a far off generator, You'd have to actually place them at least 26.25 meters apart to get them to actually do damage from a single barrage of two crows. So good luck pulling that one off, I've done it a few times, I'm sure it'll make a great clip for your montage if you pull it off repeatedly. Once again, great to see behavior actually thinking some of these things through before they even hit PTB. Instead of just having really dumb strategies like crow bombs even see the light of day. With all of that out of the way, let's talk about the add-ons for the artist, the performance artist. If you know, you know. We start off at the common tier with Vibrant Obituary. This add-on will increase the Killer Instinct notification time from Dire Crows by 1.5 seconds. This means that it will be brought up to 4.5 seconds total. Next up is Thick Tar. This add-on will increase the time required for survivors to repel a Dire Crow swarm by 0.5 seconds. This means that it will take 8.5 seconds total to insert bird reference here. Following that we have Oil Paints, more of an acrylic man myself, but uh, this add-on will increase Dire Crow's Killer Instinct Detection Radius by 1.5 meters. This means that the cube detection hitbox will be brought up to 5.5 cubic meters total. The final common add-on is Chocolocorn. 
This add-on will increase the idle time of Dire Crows before they disintegrate by 2 seconds, bringing it up to 12 seconds total. Moving on to the uncommon add-ons, we start with Velvet Fabric. This add-on will make it so when survivors attempt to repel a Dire Crow swarm, the aura of the Dire Crows will remain visible for an additional 1.5 seconds, bringing it up to 4 seconds total. Next up is Untitled Agony. This add-on will make survivors swarmed by Dire Crows suffer from the hindered status effect for 1.5 seconds. This is a bit weird and means that your idle crow swarms will basically become Freddy Snares. It doesn't actually hinder survivors who are sniped from any amount of distance from the crows launching. It's a bit bizarre, I know. And I believe that this hindered effect is your typical minus 15% speed slowdown. Next up is Still Life Crow. This add-on will increase the idle time of Dire Crows before they disintegrate by 4 seconds, bringing them up to 14 seconds total. Following that is Festering Carrion. This add-on will reduce the cooldown time of Birds of Torment after a Dire Crow takes flight by 0.5 seconds. This means the cooldown will only last for 1 second after launching Crows. And the final uncommon add-on is Automatic Drawing. This add-on will reduce the cooldown time of Birds of Torment after a Dire Crow disintegrates from inactivity by 1.5 seconds, bringing it down to just half a second total to recharge your Crow ammo after they disintegrate from inactivity. Moving on to the rare add-ons now, we have a ton that just gives status effects. Before we get into them, a quick word about how these ones function. For some reason, despite the hindered add-on Untitled Agony being worded exactly the same way as all of these, they function differently. Untitled Agony only works if a survivor touches an idle crow. However, all of these rare status effect add-ons apply if a survivor touches an idle crow or if they get swarmed by a launched crow. Don't ask me why. We start with Thorny Nest. This add-on will make survivors damaged by dire crows, suffer from the hemorrhage and mangled status effect until healed. Shockingly, it does what it says. Next up is Silver Bell. This add-on will make survivors swarmed by Dire Crows suffer from the Oblivious status effect. Does what it says again. Next up is O oh Grief, O oh Lover. This add-on will make survivors swarmed by Dire Crows suffer from the Exhausted status effect. I'm not even going to say it. Next up is Darkest Ink. This add-on will make survivors swarmed by Dire Crows suffer from the Blindness status effect. Let's go baby, it's back! And this will linger for 15 seconds after they shoo the crows away from their lunch. And the final add-on is Charcoal Stick. Charcoal is actually kind of a cheat at making nice pieces of art, and it's actually insane. I ranted again. This add-on will make the aura of flying dire crows no longer visible, and instead make the aura of dire crows visible for 0.5 seconds after being summoned. Going up a tier, the first very rare add-on is Severed Tongue. I always thought the thing to do was to cut off your ear, but you do you, I guess. This add-on will reduce the slowdown duration of the artist when Dire Crows take flight by 0.5 seconds. Once again, the slowdown is slowing you down to 3.68 meters per second or 92% speed for 1.5 seconds by default. So with this add-on, you will only be slowed to that 92% for 1 second. Next up is Severed Hands. Once again, a real artist cuts off their own ear. You kind of need hands for your craft, but okay, bro. This add-on will make any survivor swarmed by Dire Crows spread their Dire Crow swarm to any other survivor within 3 meters of them. This is essentially the Doctor's Iridescent Queen add-on, but for crows instead of static electricity. Next up is Matthias's Baby Shoes. This add-on will reveal the aura of survivors within 5 meters of idle Dire Crows for 3 seconds. And finally we have the Ink Egg. This add-on will increase the capacity of Dire Crows by 1 and reduce the amount of time they can spend idle by 4 seconds, bringing it down to only 6 seconds of loafing around total. So let's talk about Roberto Matas, Ultra Add-ons. Wait, wrong Chilean artist, my mistake. We start with Iridescent Feather. This add-on will make your Dire Crows instantly down any survivor hit. Just kidding, could you imagine? No, it actually grants you the undetectable status effect whenever Birds of Torment is on cooldown and the artist has no crows in reserve so you've used up all your crows. It will also reduce the maximum amount of crows you can hold by one, bringing you down to just two total. And the final ultra rare add-on, and the final add-on in general, is Garden of Rot. This add-on will make any survivor who completes the get these stupid birds out of my face action suffer from the exposed status effect for four seconds after completing it. 
Now let's get into the teachable perks you'll unlock when you put your blood points into the Artiste. At level 30, you unlock the teachable for the perk Grim Embrace. Grim Embrace will grant you a token for each unique survivor you hook for the first time, much like barbecue and chili. Once you reach four tokens, meaning you've hooked every survivor one time, at least, all generators on the map will become blocked for 30 slash 35 slash 40 seconds, and the aura of the obsession will be revealed to you for five seconds. At level 35, you'll unlock the teachable for the perk Scourge Hook colon Pain Resonance. Being a Scourge Hook perk, this will make four hooks on the map turn into Scourge Hooks. Sadly, it does not stack with the other one to make eight hooks. You're only allowed to have four at a time, apparently. Every time you hook a survivor on one of these Scourge Hooks, which will be conveniently highlighted in white for you, Pain Resonance will make the generator on the map with the most progress explode making it lose 9 slash 12 slash 15% progress, making it begin to regress, and making any survivor who is currently on the generator scream, revealing their location to you with a generic scream bubble notification. And finally, at level 40, you unlock the teachable for the perk Hex Pentamento, which for some reason I have such a hard time pronouncing. Despite being a Hex perk, this will not actually spawn any Hex totem at the start of the match, and works a little differently. Firstly, it reveals the aura of any broken totem on the map to you, and will allow you to rekindle them by walking up and pressing space PC, of course. For having one relit totem, you will reduce survivor's repair speed on generators. For two lit totems, you will reduce their healing speed of survivors, in addition to the previous ones. For three, you will reduce the recovery speed of all down survivors, in addition to the previous. And for 4, you will reduce the gate opening speed in addition to all the previous. And at 5, all hex totems become permanently blocked by the entity in addition to all of the other previous effects. The amounts of all of these effects is 20 slash 25 slash 30% based on the perk's level. Anytime a relit totem gets cleansed or booned or even remotely looked at the wrong way by a survivor, the totem is forever removed from the match. This is an extremely cool and unique perk, and I'm really glad to see behavior messing around with new mechanics. That being said, in a world of boon perks being extremely meta, it's not very good. But I will 100% be messing around with it for the memes. So let's talk about some tips for playing Carmina Mora. Yes, I can roll my R's. AKA the artist. The most obvious one, at least in my opinion, is that you can use your power for some easy cross-map tracking. Just aim it in the general-ish direction of a generator that you think a survivor might be working on and fire away. Typically, you want to try and scan three generators at the same time, the ones that are farthest from you, just for the sake of efficiency. Even if you don't actually get any hits or killer instinct notifications, you still get a little bit of information. Or you've made survivors very scared and you've at least run them off their generator for like a few seconds. Either way, it's kind of a win. What you probably don't want to be doing with your power is using it out in the open. You typically want to wait until you have some kind of an enclosed space where the survivors are kind of captive in their ability to move around, and you can kind of catch them running in a straight line so they can't dodge your crows as easily. Unless you're very skilled at reading a survivor's movement, hitting them outside of loops or hallways or some kind of vault is difficult and if you miss you're losing distance and time and not really doing anything in a chase which is not what you want to be doing as killer keep in mind that not only does having crows placed down at a loop typically make the survivor really not want to be at that loop since they could just take damage from a giant bird head but also survivors who are swarmed by crows have to stop holding down mouse one to repel the birds if they want to drop a pallet or vault a window this means that if you do get a swarm on a survivor at a stronger loop you might actually be able to wait out the cooldown by forcing them to vault a window or something, and you'll be able to hit them a second time to do the damage, because they'll have to stop the repel and the way that it's coded essentially right now, unless you're running two add-ons, this isn't really possible to do. So instead of running those two add-ons, you can try and force them to drop a pallet or vault a window. You may have noticed something that I said at the beginning of that last paragraph, and if you did, yes. Survivors really don't like staying at loops where you have crows set up, because they're probably going to take damage. So when you get to a loop, if you can set up crows in a place where you know the survivor is going to have to run to to loop it properly, they may just leave the loop even if it's a really, really strong loop. 
This kind of leaves you as just an M1 killer, but at least you got them to run away from a really safe pallet for now. If they aren't running away, you want to try and corral them into the range of your setup crow, just funnel them into it, and then hit control and damage them. So let's talk about perk builds. Once again, given what skill-based matchmaking, or MMR, or ELO, or whatever you want to call it, REO Speedwagon has done to this game, if you care about things like quote-unquote winning instead of just having fun in your video games, I think you're going to want to run your very boring, very bog standard build of Barbecue and Chili, Hex Ruin, Hex Undying and Tinkerer, Stop, I'm Already Asleep. I've seen some people dropping Tinkerer for No Way Out or Lethal Pursuer, I guess it's kind of all up to preference, but basically the shell is just Ruin Undying. If you want to be a slightly cooler kid, and not mess around with that boring old build, I've been having a lot of fun playing around with Barbecue, Scourge Hook Pain Resonance, Hex Thrill of the Hunt, and Hex Ruin. Not saying this is the best build, or uh, even a good build or anything, I've just been enjoying it. This build gives you some game slowdown with Ruin, and even some slowdown for survivors trying to set up boon totems as long as Thrill stays up. I've been enjoying Pain Resonance about as much as I thought I would when I saw the perk announced. Back then I did say it was going to just be a better pop goes the weasel, and I still feel pretty correct in my assessment of that after a few dozen matches with the perk. Sure, RNG can screw you on some larger maps, or just maps in general like the game, but I still like not having to actually find the generator to kick with pop, and instead just letting the perk do the work for me so I can just get back into a chase much quicker. So now let's move on to some meme builds for the Chilean sea bass. Tasty fish. The first meme build is Cardi B, because she's a trap artist and this is a, a trap build. I'm old, dude. This. Mm. Anyways, for this build, um, bring whatever perks you want, but if you want to be thematic, add in Spies from the Shadows, since, you know, Crow Lady. And then bring the add ons Untitled Agony and Ma Matthias. Matthias? I, I think it's Matthias. Baby Shoes. Then you're going to want to place your crows as if you're basically playing Freddy while you're at loops and not actually really shoot them out at all. Or you could, but just. Pretend you're Freddy, I guess. The second meme build is Invisible Ink. For this build, you're going to want to bring the add-ons Iridescent Feather and Ink Egg. For perks, if you want to go all in, grab some stealth perks like Dark Devotion, Hex Plaything, Hex the Third Seal, Hysteria, Tinker, you know the ones, I'm sure. You're going to want to basically shoot off your crows anytime humanly possible. You can try to use them to get downs, but more than likely, if you want to shoot them off all the time, you're just going to be using them to scout out generators or general areas where you think survivors might be. Then use the fact that you're undetectable to try and sneak around. Just be wary that the artist does have some pretty slappy feet, so they might hear you coming anyways. And that's it for this episode of Entity Education, covering Carmina Mora, probably better known as the artist. As always, links to all social media, Twitch stream, which I do every Saturday, Patreon, everything in the description and on the screen right now. Leave a like if you liked the video. Subscribe for more in the future. Thanks as always for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.